Welcome to Electron Line. Here's our second example or second video on what is the curl. So what we're going to do here is again assume that we have a vector field which circulates around the origin. So here we have another picture of that. And so notice that at any given radius the magnitude of the vector field will remain constant all the way around that circular path. So as we're close the magnitude of the vector field will be smaller. As we go farther away the magnitude of the vector field will be larger. But for any distance away from the origin the magnitude of the vector field at equidistant from the origin will be a constant. And so we're just going to use that as a simple example. So what we're trying to do now is try to give you a feel again for the magnitude of the circulation of that vector field. Now, what that again means is how much does the vector field change in magnitude as we move a unit in the x direction and a unit in the y direction, but we actually have a better mathematical equation to define that concept. So here we're going to define the magnitude of the, uh, I would say, the, the magnitude of the curl by multiplying the curl by the unit directional vector perpendicular to the area or the plane made by the vector field. So here we have a unit vector which is perpendicular to the plane of the vector field and if we take the curl and we do a dot product with the unit vector in the same direction then of course this becomes the scalar quantity of that in other words it becomes the magnitude of the curl of that vector field. Now, a way in which we can then calculate the magnitude as well is by considering traveling along the path of the vector field in a circular path. Notice we can take the small segments that we move as small line segments, dl, but they're directional vectors, so we have to take into account the magnitude and the direction of dl. We multiply that times the magnitude of the vector field here and then we integrate all the way around the line. So basically we're going, we're going to do a line integral around the vector field at an equidistant distance r away from the origin. Notice that the path that we take will have a circular area of pi r squared and the distance that we travel will be 2 pi r. Then we can define the magnitude of the curl which we define right here right, this is the magnitude of the curl, is equal to the limit as the area approaches zero. So here is the new concept. We're going to shrink this area and as you will see in the future we don't have to pick our point of circulation at the origin. We can pick it anywhere in the vector field and we'll see that later. But we're going to shrink the area. We're going to call the limit as a goes to zero of one divided by the area times the line integral of the magnitude of the vector field dotted with dl integrating all the way around. So this becomes 1 over pi r squared, of course it's r goes to 0, times the magnitude of the vector field because it will be constant along that path, times the distance traveled along the path which is 2 pi r, which means that, and of course we have to put a caveat on there, for a vector field that is constant along the path of circulation, the magnitude of the curl will be twice the magnitude of the vector field divided by the radius of the curl. And of course, as we make the radius smaller and smaller and smaller, that of course is necessary if it's not constant. For a constant vector field, it doesn't matter how big the radius is, we can make the radius large or small, but we need to put this in there in case that there is a varying change. In other words, it's not a linear change, but a nonlinear change in the magnitude of the vector field, then we'll have to apply this limitation that a goes to zero. We just picked up a very, very, very tiny circulation. But now let's see if this is indeed correct with our example right here. Notice that in the previous video, we found that the curl of this vector field defined here was equal to 2 times k, k of course being unit vector in the z direction, and 2 was therefore constant, which means that no matter where you go in the vector field, the circulation or the curl will always be equal to the number 2. Now, let's apply this here. So, we say that this is equal to 2 times the magnitude of the vector field along the path of circulation. So, let's go to this path right here where the 
the distance will always be equal to two units. And you can see here, by this equation, when you go two units away, over here, the magnitude will be equal to two in the j direction. And then over here, the magnitude will be equal to two in the i direction or the x direction. So we can see that the magnitude will always be two along the circular path. So two times two divided by the radius of the circle. And the radius, of course, will be two in this case. So we divide that by two. And four divided by two is equal to two which indeed gives us again the magnitude of the curl. So here you can see that applying this mathematical equation, if we do a line integral along the path and we sum all that up and we take that sum and we divide it by the area of the circulation, we will indeed get the magnitude of the curl. And that again gives us a little bit more insight about what we mean when we're taking the curl of a vector field. That's how we figure it out.